Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the LGBT Plus Advancing Podcast. We are part of the Media Village family. I am Dr. Chris. I use she, her pronouns. And I have a new friend that you must meet who is rocking an outfit today that we need to talk about. So tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I am uh, Margie Freer. I am the Vice President of Human Resources at Mower Advertising Agency. Um, I have been in my role here for just over nine years after starting here as a part-time recruiter um, when I had a new baby and a toddler. Uh, Mower was gracious enough to allow me to work from home at that time and on a reduced schedule, and that was kind of before that was a thing, really. Um, but over the years, my position evolved, my children got older, and I transitioned into a full-time role. My responsibilities increased, and now I sit here as the head of the HR department in my nice, colorful dress. I love it. I have heard from a little birdie that on this day that we are recording this, there's a reason you're wearing a nice, colorful dress. Yes. So my wardrobe in general consists of mostly dark or beige kind of plain clothing. So I was looking through my closet. I wanted something that had a, a little more color and pattern because today is actually an in-office day, which we only do once a month at Mower. And when we have these in-office days, it's usually focused around some sort, sort of cultural celebration. And today happens to be the day that we are celebrating um, Pride Month. Oh, wow. So how is that then with all of the kind of political conversations going on around this topic, how is that coming up to you as somebody in HR? The political aspect, I, I don't really focus much on that. I focus on the employees, you know, and what that means to my employees. And that's my primary concern. That's the concern of our leadership is um, retention and providing a culture to our employees that they feel comfortable in. Um, you know, obviously with the work we do in campaigns, you know, there's a little bit of that, but in my position, I just focus on um, just the people here. I love that thought. I love that even though the world is doing whatever it's doing on any given day politically, that there's such a clear understanding and decision for you and your team, that it's not about what's happening sort of out there, but what's happening in here. It is, and we make sure that we message that whatever's going on out there, we're here for our people, we're gonna support you, we're gonna listen, and we want them to feel safe and comfortable. How does that work then when you're dealing with things like hiring practices? How do you make sure that you get a group of people that think in that alignment? Um, I focus when I'm, I'm recruiting, I focus on our values. And one of our values is putting community first. And community is um, about our internal community and it's about our external community. So um, that's what I focus on. And when I'm talking to people, just even the first conversation, I try to bring our values into that. Um, I've also learned how to do that in different ways through some of the training I've had. I'm a, a certified diversity and in inclusion recruiter. So I went through training, which was very helpful in giving me some of the tools and resources to make sure I'm doing this job to my fullest when I'm trying to, to screen and find the right fit for more. I, I really love that we have gone from like this thought of the initial question being you know, out in the world to immediately being brought, I think the word you used was community. What a great sort of reframe of the realities of what's happening and what needs to be happening in the workplace. Couldn't agree more. What made you go in to get the diversity training certification? You know, it's something that I did when I first went into human resources and I was just recruiting um, more in a corporate environment. My background is working and more, more rigid environments. Um, I worked in defense contracting, government contracting environment, and I also worked in a medical device environment. Um, when I started, I just, it's very, um, it's a very different environment than, than mower. It was like, kind of like what I was talking about with my wardrobe. It was more like 
beige and gray and mowers more colorful. And um, I've always been that kind of person. And I feel like it's it's a better match for me here. So when um, part of me has always been someone who personally inclusion has been very important to me. And I think that actually goes back to my very first position out of college and I worked with adults with developmental disabilities. So I've worked with um, so many, and when I say disabilities, it was anywhere from someone who had a visual problem to people that had um, you know, physical and mental challenges all across the board. And that was, uh, I didn't have any background in that. I just had an HR background, but I helped those folks find jobs and it taught me a lot about people and people's differences and I think that has always been a passion of mine so when I um, you know sought out to get the diversity and inclusion training and certi certification that's what I that's what you know kind of um, encouraged me to do that was from those experiences and it's not just it's it's just people are so different so whether it be a disability whether it be you know race, whether it be someone who is in the LGBTQ plus community, um, to me, it's important to, to be knowledgeable enough and to make the effort to have that sort of environment where I work. So I guess it's just personally brought into my, personally and expanded into to my career and what I do. And I know being in HR, that's something that you're supposed to do legally, but it goes beyond that. So since we're thinking and talking about sort of the HR realm of things with somebody and so many people looking for jobs now and thinking about interviewing, do you have recommendations for whether somebody who is LGBT plus on whether they should be trying to sort of hide who they are or if they've done work in a community facility, for example, should they be hiding that on their resume? Um, I don't think you should hide anything on your resume. I think that you should be as transparent as you can. I do understand that uh, individuals may think that that is a risk, but do you really want to be part of an organization that would prefer for you to hide that or didn't know that up front? So in the, at the end of the day, I don't think that's going to be a match for you if that's not something you feel like you can share and express up front. So that's my view. It's so interesting because it wasn't so long ago that sort of the recommendation for so many was do what you can to fit in and try to, you know, dress the culture and, and say the culture words and get the lingo and the jargon from the websites. And now it's sort of this thought of be exactly who you are and hope that it's the right match. Yes, I do like it a balance when I'm talking to someone. I, I, I'm impressed if they, you know, can maybe cite some things that they saw on our website, some of the work that we've done. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I want it to be a lot about them and their values and whether that aligns with, for them, if, if their own values align with our company values and vice versa, then that's going to make the best long-term fit. Oh, that makes so much sense to think long-term. I think it's so easy sometimes when you're job hunting just to think about the bill I have to pay today or the one that's coming next week or the one at the end of the month, that it's hard to think long-term. It is. I mean, if there's a job and there's a career, and I feel like a lot of people are looking more long-term about a career versus just a job. I think that has just evolved through everything that's happened over the years and through COVID. And I think people prefer to find that comfort, find that home. And so they look more outside of just the skills and requirements of the job, but what that culture and environment is all about. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely research that talks about the increased employee retention when you're somewhere that you're happy and you feel like you're seen. Absolutely. Um, that's something else that we've really focused on and more, especially uh, during the pandemic. It's how, do, how are we going to keep people? And it's, it's listening and it's um, surveying them. You know, that's something that maybe we used to do, but not on, in any cadence now. That's something that we're doing quarterly, making sure, you know, checking the temperature, doing it anonymously so they feel comfortable sharing information and making sure we're providing them, 
you know, not just with the tools and resources and training, but also um, some of the other things that are important to people, you know, like employee resource groups or, you know, feeling like they, they trust their, their supervisors and, and some of those things that are, are not so tangible. So when we think about the not so tangible, I think the celebration of pride at a company is, is one of those not exactly tangible, but definitely felt kind of experiences. It's, it was a lot of fun. This is, I would say, our, I think this is our third year where we had more of a formal agency-wide celebration. I mean, we, we did things in individual offices, but now that we're more one, one, we're one office, like we're one agency, I should say, and not so much about the separate offices. So we've, the last few years have been doing an agency-wide celebration. Um, last year we did, um, we had like, everyone got together across all, all of the different locations. It did like an educational trivia game, that type of thing. And then afterwards, everyone did kind of their, their own thing where they were. And here in Syracuse, where I sit, we actually went to a drag show. And wow. it was Eric Mower, you know, is um, the most, our, our senior leader and founder. He, he went, uh, everyone, you know, everyone who felt comfortable going with went and we walked down and we had this, this uh, private show just for us. And it was just, it was a, it was just a ton of fun, you know, and today we did something a little bit different. We had an internal group that got together and put on, uh, it was a trivia, but it was run by the facilitator was uh, a drag queen and was just comical and engaging. And it was just, there was a lot of laughs. And we also learned, you know, um, the questions were, some of them were quite challenging. And I think everyone, you know, uh, finished out the, the program, learning something and uh, also having a lot of fun. It makes my activist heart happy. I think, you know, even though we try to separate out, as we talked about politics from what's going on internally, there are so many things in the news now that make it feel like we've gone so far backwards for those who are supportive of the community. And yet here we are with a major organization and an HR queen talking about a drag event and multiple drag events. What a different kind of world we're in than where we were 10 or 20 or 50 years ago. Definitely. And I think that it was out of, you know, some people's comfort zone, but, um, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing, you know, to be, it was my first time, you know, it was slightly out of my, my comfort zone. Um, but that's part of learning and growing and, and that's, you know, experiencing that together is just, uh, it's just, something that I would have never imagined 20 years ago when I started my career in HR. And um, I think that that we've gotten to this place is just, uh, it's amazing. And I don't know if it's the same in, in every industry because this industry is a lot different than industries I've worked with, but, but uh, they're missing out if they're not moving along the way we are. Yeah. And, you know, there is so much research that talks about this and that talks about not just employee retention, but employee satisfaction when you can be your authentic self in whatever that means, whether it's, you know, the color or lack of color of your clothing or the events that happen during Pride Month, all of that really comes together for a full career experience. And that's, you know, that's what inclusion is, is all about. And you hear that word so much more, you know, it, it, it used to be diversity and equity, you know, and then the inclusion and the belonging has become such a bigger part of that picture and something that we definitely here have have focused on, um, you know, not just, you know, yes, we're having this, this fun pride event, but it's more about year round and, and the training that goes along with that, you know, and we try to Keep the momentum going and not just, okay, so we're going to talk about, you know, whether it be uh, mental health awareness, which we talked about last month in May and focused on, and this month it's k Pride, but we're talking about those things all year round and, and going through trainings like, you know, unconscious bias, not just once, but what comes after that. So I think it's all about the consistency and making sure that, you know, it's, it's a journey and it's not just an experience. Oh, that's such a key point too. I think there are so many organizations that 
whether it's intentionally performative or it's accidentally that way, June is a good month to put some things together and put some rainbows on some products. And, you know, I always sort of say the LGBT plus community isn't like Santa. They still exist when it comes July 1st, even though Pride Month is over. Absolutely. It is such a good thing that we have you here. It is such a good thing that you let all of us belong where you are. And I know we don't get to keep you because you've got festivities to get back to, but thank you so much for making time and for, for dressing up in your, in your colorful clothes. It's been a lot of fun. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, enjoy the festivities. And I know and hope that those of you who are watching and listening will continue to enjoy the LGBT Plus Advancing podcast. We are part of the Media Village family and we will see you or you will listen to us, I suppose is the way to word that, sometime soon. Thank you, thank you, Margie, and thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day. You too.